Well, we've shown you the tools and accessories that every fly fisherman is going to need. Now let me teach you how to tie the four most important knots that every fly fisherman needs to know how to tie in order to be successful. To do that, let's head out on the water and let's do this under real fishing conditions. Hey everybody, we're out here on the river now, we're about ready to go fishing. We're going to talk about knots in just a second, but I want to give you a quick tip, all right? Now, we've had this reel stored in our car for a little while, and uh, depending on how long you go in between fishing trips, here's a little tip for you, it'll make it a lot easier to get started. First of all, let's just strip off a bunch of line, and you're seeing what's happening here already. You've got a lot of curl within your leader. The same thing is going to happen to the line itself. You've got all these little curls. Now, if you don't straighten that out, at least in the first 30 feet, it's going to make it very difficult to start casting. So we're going to strip off about 30 feet of line. <clears throat> it's a very simple process. All I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch. This is nice, stretchable line. Floats very high in the water. But if I just tug on it a little bit, just like that, the entire 30 feet length and you can already see what's happening. It lays much, much straighter. This side I haven't stretched yet. This side I have just stretched and it's hanging nice and straight. And if you'll do that every time before you get started, you'll have much better luck on the river. Now, don't forget to do the same thing to your leader material. Again, it's monofilament line. It stretches very easy. Just give it a little tug. You know, this is also a great way to test your leader. Okay? If you've any, got any little breaks inside of that, or any little nicks, when you go to tug on it like this, it's going to break then. Much rather have it break when you're testing it and straightening it out than when you hook up that big old fish, right? Okay, so you just straighten that line out, and there you go. you got a nice straight leader to get started, much easier to cast, much better presentations on the water. All right, now that we've done that, how do you string it through the guides on your fly rod? Well, a lot of people, when they're first starting, We'll grab the very end of this tippet material and start running that through the guides. Okay, well first of all, this is very thin material. Kind of hard to see because it's clear, like this. I'm having kind of a hard time already. And they'll start working that. If they happen to drop that, boom, it goes all the way back through the guides. You've got to start all over again. So let me show you a little easier way. Let's take the fly line, and we're just going to double the fly line over and make a little loop like this. And you see how much easier that is? I can run that up through the guides. We'll go all the way through the top. Need a little bit more line to finish it off. Very easy process. Trust me, it sounds like a very little thing, but it's very easy. Now, when you get to the top, if I just simply find the section that's loose, that's not connected to the fly reel, and I just pull it through, and pretty soon, here comes my leader. Perfect, and I'm done. I'm ready to attach a fly, and I'm ready to go fishing. Small tip, it'll help you out a lot, save you some time, and make the process a lot easier. Before we start talking about knots, let's talk about leaders and tippets for just a minute. You have your fly line on your rod, but you also need a leader that connects the fly line to your fly. Now, there's lots of different kinds of leader material out there, both monofilament uh, and what we call fluorocarbon, which is actually almost invisible under the surface of the water. It's a little more expensive. I personally believe it's worth it. Uh, I think the cigar brand is a very good quality tippet material, but no matter what kind that you use, I want to show you something here. This is a small piece of leader material, okay? And it's very strong, even though it's very, very thin. But I want to show you something. I'm pulling on that really hard. You can actually see it stretch. I want to warn you against something, and that is wind knots. When you're casting a fly rod, inevitably you're going to get a wind knot, okay? Now, I'm just going to put a little overhand knot in this piece of tippet material. And you saw how hard I pulled on it a minute ago as I was stretching it. Now watch. Look at that. 
one little overhand knot or a wind knot in your tippet material and you're going to lose that next fish that you hook up. So as I was stretching that line to begin with at the start of the day, you notice that it not only was straightening the line, but it's also checking for those wind, knot, wind knots and those small abrasions in your leader so that you don't have that kind of failure when you have a fish on. So strongly encourage you to check those uh, leaders before you start fishing. Make sure there's no wind knots in there. Okay, let's talk about leaders and tippet. What the heck is the difference between a leader and a tippet? Well, a leader typically comes in a package like this. This one happens to be nine feet long and it's a 2X. 2X is the diameter of the material itself. Now on a leader like this, what you're actually gonna see when you take it out of the package is one end is pretty darn thick. The other end is very thin. The thick end actually connects to your fly line. After you've run it all the way through your guides, now we're gonna attach a leader to the fly line itself. And to do that, we're gonna use a nail knot. Okay, but before we do that, let's think about leader material. There's lots of different sizes. You're going to see seven and a half feet long, eight feet long, nine feet long, even up to 12 foot long leader material. And again, one end is very thick. The other end is very small. In this case, 2X small. You'll be able to buy tippet material from say a 0X all the way up to about a 6X diameter size. Now for most of the fishing that we do, we're going to use between four and six X as far as diameter where it actually attaches to the fly itself. So I'll often buy a leader that is only seven and a half feet long and two or three X. And then I'm going to add tippet material, say a six X or a four X or a five X tippet to the end of that leader. So really what what you have is you have leader material that starts very thick at one end, comes down to a pretty small diameter, that's the actual leader. The tippet, the tippet material, is the smallest part that connects to the fly from the end of the leader. So we're going to talk about how we attach that in a minute too. Those are going to be called either a, a blood knot or a triple surgeon knot. Very easy to tie and uh, I'll show you how to do that as well. Let's talk about leader material a little bit. This is actually called tippet, happens to be fluorocarbon. Now, with leader material, there's both monofilament and fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is a lot more expensive, uh, roughly two to three times, sometimes even four times more expensive than regular monofilament. But the advantage is, for the diameter, it's very small, okay? And it's also very strong. Biggest advantage, of course, is the fact that it is virtually invisible under the surface of the water. In many cases, you can get by using a larger diameter, in other words, stronger tippet material using fluorocarbon, and still have the ability to catch fish because the line is virtually invisible under the surface of the water. Now, this happens to be a 6X tippet material. It's made by a cigar called Grand Max Fluorocarbon. You'll notice that it comes in small spools of 25 yards long. The diameter is 0.005 inches in diameter, so it's very, very small, but it's still 3.7 pounds breaking strength, so it's very strong material. You'll, have, you'll want to have an assortment of leader material or tippet material in your pack system. This one's a 4X. Now, if I was to have a, uh, an assortment of, of material in my pack, I usually carry four different sizes. I've already built my leader, so all I'm going to be doing is adding on tippet material at the end. And I'll carry 4X, 5X, 6X, and usually even a 7X in case I'm fishing very, very tiny little flies and if the fish are pretty finicky and not wanting to strike at a fly attached to a thicker diameter tippet. So I strongly suggest you have a 4, 5, 6, and even a 7X tippet material in your pack so you can change it out based on the fishing conditions. We'll take another quick look at this, at this leader material. This is how it comes packaged. You'll see this is a 9 foot long 2X fluorocarbon leader. And inside of this will be all wound up, nine feet long, starting very thick on one end, down to that 2X diameter, which is 0.02 inches in diameter with a breaking strength of eight pounds. Now, please don't misunderstand something. A 6X tippet material with only 3.7 pound breaking strength. That doesn't mean that if you catch a five pound fish, you're gonna break that fish off. 
Think about it. This line will actually stretch a little bit. Your rod has a lot of bend to it. It acts like a shock absorber. So you can actually use very small diameter, very light breaking strength tippet and still catch very, very big fish. You don't need to think about matching the size of fish that you're going to catch with the pound breaking strength on your tippet. What you're trying to match up is the size of the tippet material that matches best with the size of fly that you're going to use and the general fishing conditions. Now if I'm fishing a very small size 20 nymph under a strike indicator, I'm going to have to use at least a 6x tippet because that fly is so small and the eye in the fly is so small that I'm not going to be able to even get that thicker material through that. So I'm going to have to go down to this small diameter, 0 0.005 diameter fluorocarbon leader so that it goes through and connects to that fly very, very nicely and I still get a natural movement to that fly under the surface of the water. If I'm using a fly uh, that small and I say a 2x tippet, that fly is going to be uh, tied very stiff and tight to that leader material and it's not going to have a natural dead drift under the surface of the water. So, once again, just to recap, we're not matching up the breaking strength of the tippet material to the size of fish that we're catching. We're trying to match up the diameter of the tippet material to the fishing conditions and the size of flies that we're going to be using. All right, let's talk about how we're going to attach that leader that you just bought to the fly line. Now some fly lines, when you buy them, they have a small loop connection already incorporated into the design of the fly line. If you have a fly line like this, it's very, very easy to connect the leader to it. In fact, some leaders actually come with a second loop right here. Now you, all you would do is simply slide that loop through, take the other end of the leader, slide it through that loop and pull it tight and you have this loop-to-loop -loop connection. It's very easy to do that. However, all fly lines don't come with a loop-to-loop -loop connection, nor do all tippet materials or all leader materials. So if you have a line like this one right here that has a straight end to it, no loop connection, you're going to have to learn how to tie a nail knot. Now a nail knot is not something you're going to do very often. Typically you're only going to attach the butt section of the leader to your fly line once or twice a season or when you change to a new fly line. So it's not something you do very often. Whereas the blood knot, the uni knot, uh, the improved clinch knot, those are knots you use every time you're on the water. You're going to have to become very, very proficient at those and practice them a lot. This is a knot you don't do very often, but I'll show you a very easy way to do it and it actually takes a little tool called a nail knot tool. So, what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, I'm going to grab a piece of that 3x leader again, just for demonstration purposes. I wouldn't typically be using this type of leader material, but it's just for demonstration, and I'll show you how to tie that knot. We'll take the end of your fly line and slide it right up in the channel, the groove of the nail knot tool, and because I'm right-handed, I typically hold that in my left hand. And you'll notice here that I've left about an inch or two extended out the other end of the nail knot tool, which I push down and hold firmly in place with my left hand. I'm going to take my leader material, the monofilament, and slide it in the opposite direction through the nail knot tool. And there's a little channel that it lays right down inside here. Now, I'm going to take that leader material and wrap it over the top of that channel about seven times. And as I do that, what I'm creating is a strong connection point. Okay, now it's wrapped over the top. I take the tag end and I slide it right down through that channel till it comes out this end just like that. Now I've got this little tag end. Now by quickly pulling that wrapped piece of monofilament off the top of the channel of the nail knot tool, it'll slide right onto the fly line just like this. Then I can simply pull the monofilament out, grab both ends of the monofilament, and pull that down nice and tight. You notice how now that connection is very, very tight and very, very thin diameter, not much larger than the fly line itself, right over the top of that fly line. Once again, this is where that sharp cutting tool comes in. I'll run that cutting tool right down close to that knot and clip off that little piece of fly line on that end and on the nail knot side the tag end of the monofilament. I'll trim that down nice and close as well. And now I have a firm connection to my fly line with my leader material, and that'll hold just as strong as that loop-to-loop -loop connection. Very easy to do, 
as long as you have a nail knot tool. This is a very difficult knot to tie without this tool. But that's a great way to attach leader to a brand new fly line. Don't have to do it very often, but you definitely want to practice that. All right, so you're out fishing, and let's say you've lost a fish, or maybe you've got hooked up on the bottom and you've broken everything off, and you need to add some more tippet material to the leader. Well, there's, there's a good way and there's a bad way to attach two types of monofilament line together. If you were to tie a basic overhand knot like we've all done for most of our lives, that knot would be very weak and it would also be very big and thick and it just wouldn't work very well for this application. So there's two different types of knots that we can use. Now the difference in why I use those at different times is uh, fairly straightforward, fairly simple. Um, using thicker monofilament line, say down to 0x, I'll just about always use what I call, and what the industry calls, a blood knot. Now a blood knot, we're basically attaching two pieces of line. For example, this line in my right hand represents the line that comes from my fly rod on my leader material. The line in my left hand will represent the tippet that goes down to the fly. And I might want to add extra length on, or I might want to go down to a smaller diameter based on fishing conditions. In order to do that, I need a good quality knot, and this is the blood knot. I'm going to take these two pieces of monofilament. Now you notice that they have kind of a natural bend in it, almost steer horns, if you will. Okay? I try to get those steer horns pointing up and away from each other like this right here. I'm simply going to cross that over, and because I'm right-handed, I'm going to start by pinching that X in my left hand. With my right hand now, I'm going to take this tag end and wrap it over the top of the leader side three times. Once, twice, three times. Now you'll notice that I've created a little hole right here, a little gap in between my finger and the leader material. I'm going to take this tag end now and push it through that hole away from my body. I'm going to grab that in this hand pull that up slightly, and now I'm going to change hands holding that same X that I had originally held in my left hand. Now I've got the same piece of tag-in material with a little steer horn pointing up in the air, but it's on this side of the leader material. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it over the top of the tippet side of the leader towards me three times. Once, twice, and three times. Now, you see I've still created a nice little gap right there. There's a little hole for that to force through. Now, from on the opposite side of the line, I'm going to push the tag end through that hole and pull it up slightly. And if I just change hands and hold those two tag ends up in the air, you'll see a nice little figure eight looking loop. Okay? I'm going to hold that together right where they all intersect. Grab those two tag ends in my teeth. I'm not cutting them off with my teeth. Please don't do that. Use a pair of nippers to cut line. But I'm just going to hold those, and I'm going to use both hands and pull these apart, just like this. Just like that. You notice when I did that, once again, as important all the time, is I got that monofilament wet slightly so that that line would slide together and maintain its strength and also slide together much tighter. Now I'm just going to reach up, grab my nippers, cut that off very close on both sides, and what you see is a very compact, even, and very strong knot. That's called the blood knot. Now, I personally think this is probably one of the hardest knots to tie uh, for the beginner. This is one that I strongly suggest you take a look at uh, on a website, look at how it's actually done, review this video over and over, and whatever you do, practice before you go to the river because when it's cold out and the wind's blowing and the fish are rising and boy you want to get back in the water real quick and you're fumbling to try, a, to try to tie a blood knot for the very first time, it can be a problem. So practice at home while you're watching the movie uh, and then go to the river knowing how to tie a quality blood knot. All right, now we're going to show you how to tie the next knot that's used to attach two pieces of monofilament. Now I typically use this knot 
when I'm attaching very small diameters of monofilament. Once again, for demonstration purposes, I'm using that 03X tippet so you can see it very easily. But if I'm attaching, say, a 4X tippet to a 6X, very small diameter, I'm going to use a knot. It's called a triple surgeon. Once again, the line in my right hand here will represent the line that actually comes from my leader. The line in my left hand represents the rest of the tip material that's going to go down to my fly. I'm simply going to lay those two pieces of line over the top of each other like this. Now, to help, help them stay together, I like to just run those through my mouth and make them slightly wet and you can see how they stick together better. Okay. Now, I'm going to make a one hand overhand loop away from my body with my left hand and make a cross. Okay, I'll do that one more time. I'm right handed, so I'm going to move my right hand towards my body, creating a loop, bringing those two together, and holding that intersection between my index finger and my thumb. Now, I have the leader material that goes out to my fly, and I have this small tag end. I'm now going to wrap that through this hole three times, both pieces, and make sure you take both. If you just take one part, the knot will not hold. So I take the tag end and the leader, push it right through that hole, reach from the other side, and pull it through. That's once. And I push it through again. That's twice. And I reach around, push it through again, that's three times. Now, before I tighten it, you'll see what we have here. It just looks like an overhand knot, but it's wrapped three times. That's why it's called the triple surgeon. Once again, I'm going to start pulling that together, and as I do that, I'm going to get that knot wet. And I'm going to simply pull that together nice and tight, and tighten it up this way. And now what you have is a very nice, tight, very strong knot that I can slide my nippers up very close, trim off those two tag ends, and I've got a monofilament to monofilament connection that will absolutely hold, I absol and I also think that this knot is actually a little bit stronger than the blood knot, especially for small diameter lines. It's also much easier to tie any time of the year, cold weather conditions, it's definitely the way to go. This is called the triple surgeon. This is probably the knot that you're going to use, I'm going to say, 90% of the time. Uh, it's for attaching your tip of material to your fly. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use a great big old fly so you can see it a little bit easier. And I'm also going to use a very thick diameter. This is an 03X, very thick diameter tip of material. So basically, you're going to start, if you're right-handed, I start with my fly in my left hand, leader material in my right, and I'm simply going to push that leader material up through the eye of the fly and I'm going to make one loop like this. I'm still holding that nice and tight in my hand. Now, with my left hand, I'm going to rotate the body of the fly to put twists into the line. Now, the number of twists varies depending on the size of the fly and the size of the material. But for the most part, I'm going to put six or seven twists in that line. Now you've noticed that I have a nice little loop right here, and I'm going to take the tag end of that leader material and slide it right through that loop, just like that, until it comes out the other side. Now I'm going to grab it with this part of my finger and push up through that same hole that I've created now and pull it tight so it looks kind of like that right there. Now here's a very important part. Monofilament will actually heat up and weaken as you draw it down tight together. So every time you make, you make a knot, and I don't care what kind of knot that you tie, I'm going to encourage you to just get the knot slightly wet, and I do that by just running it through my lips. Just like that. That's all it takes. Now I'm simply going to draw that knot down tight, just like that. See how tight that is to the eye of the hook? It's a very nice, small, compact knot. Then I'm just going to reach down, grab my nipper tool, and trim that excess off very tight to the eye of that hook. That's called the improved clinch knot, and it's a knot that you'll use for attaching almost every fly, especially dry flies, to your tip material. Very, very strong knot. 
The next knot that we're going to tie is going to be called the uni knot. Now, the first one we tied was called the improved clinch. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the same nice big fly and the same 03X tippet material so you can see it a little bit easier. But if you remember, the last knot that we tied, after we ran it through the eye, wrapped it around, came back through that hole, and tightened it down, it was very tight to the eye of the hook. Now the next knot, this uni knot, I often will use this knot only when I'm using streamers, and I'll show you why. We're going to start the same way exactly. We're going to slide it through the eye of that hook, but we're going to take out a little bit more line than we did the first time. Now with my left hand, I'm just going to hold that line together right by the eye of the hook. I don't need to use my other hand. I can simply lift, leave that tag end hanging free. Now, by grabbing this line and making one nice loop underneath and pinching that in my hand, again my left hand, now the tag end is pointing straight up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this tag end and wrap it over the leader material and the loop right through that hole and we're going to do that four times. I hope you can see this. This is a very important knot and I'll explain why in just a minute. Okay, now that you've done that, you can see that that line is wrapped over the top of both the leader and through the hole that we've made. And now we're simply going to pull that knot nice and tight. Once again, every knot that you tie, get it slightly wet so it doesn't heat up and become weaker. Now we're going to slowly pull that knot in tight to the eye of the hook. Just as before, we're going to take our line cutter, and again, this is why it's so important to have a nice, sharp line cutter, very easy to use. We're going to slide it up close to that eye and cut off that little tag end piece. Now, those two knots look almost identical. Here's the difference in this knot. Being called a uni knot, it's actually a sliding knot, and I can grab my fingernails and open up this loop. And I hope you can see that all right. But now the difference is this knot is not tight eye of the hook, it actually has a much larger loop. When the streamer fly is being pulled through the water, it has the ability to dive and move around more because the knot is not tight to the eye of the hook. Now, once you hook up and catch a fish, that knot is going to slide tight again to the eye of the hook. Just remember, after you land the fish and you're ready to catch another one, before you make your cast, use your fingernails, open that loop up again, and you've got that nice open loop to give your fly a lot more action. This is called the uni knot. I typically use it only on streamers. I wouldn't use this on dry flies, but it really gives a lot more action to the fly, and I think it's very, very important to use streamers only. Mm -hmm.